So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. Today we're going to answer a question I get in almost every video when I show the sawmill running. And that question is, do you resharpen your blades or can you resharpen your blades? The answer is yes, and that's what this machine is right here behind me. So this machine right here is made by Woodmiser. The model number is a BMS 250. And guys, I've had this for about four years. I bought it with my own money. This is not a sponsored video or nothing like that. And I don't show this all the time because to be honest with you, it's not real exciting to see on film a sharpener, you know, grind on blades. But this is the machine that I do use here at my mill to resharpen the blades. Let me show you how it works. All right, guys, so this is the controls. This is a 220 machine. You can get this with 110. I can't remember why I went with 220, but I did and it runs just fine. I know guys that run this on 110, it works just fine as well. It doesn't pull a lot of amperage. Right here, you got your emergency stop. You got two of your on buttons for the machine. Right here, you have the on button for the grinding wheel. This is for the lubrication oil that pumps the oil over the wheel. And right here is the feed rate. It's pretty simple. And if you ever have any trouble, it does come with a key right here to open this up if anything gets in the jam and you have to reset any of the breakers. Right there is how you access it. All right, guys, right here is the main part of the machine. The grinding wheel is right there. Let me point it out to you guys. And I'll talk about profiles here in just a minute. That's what grinds the blade. Right here is a cam action. If I can move the camera over, you guys can see what I'm talking about. So we've got a cam right here that rotates. And what this does is it pushes the blade forward. And every time it pushes the blade forward, it raises up this wheel off the blade so you're not grinding your teeth off. I'm gonna turn it on without the uh, grinding wheel running. You can, guys can kind of see how this does move. All right, go ahead and just start advancing the wheel. So that right there is at probably half speed. It goes pretty fast if you want it to. And sometimes you wanna go slow like that so you can make some fine adjustments on this because this will determine where the grinding wheel falls in the gullet of the blade. So you can adjust this to push the blade either further or less. That way you make sure that wheel falls right in that profile. The profile of the grinding wheel fits perfectly with the profile of your blade. All right, so this drawer right here has all my different grinding wheels and they're all labeled. So I have four degree, 747, turbo seven and seven degree. This right here is what the blade looks like and they are all shaped for the profile of the blade. So when I talk about different blades like the silver tip turbo seven or 747, they're all shaped differently and you need a grinding wheel for each of those profiles. So that's why I have four different wheels. Although all I run anymore is silver tip turbo sevens, it's good to have these different profiles on hand. And another part of the machine is this right here. This is the pump that sends the oil over the grinding wheel to keep it cool. And this whole drawer that we'll pull out right there is full of that oil and it recycles through that pump constantly. And there are some magnets down here also that collect the shavings as they fall down into the oil. That's really the only maintenance to this machine is replacing your oil and taking out those magnets and getting the shavings off of them. So a few things to consider. With this machine, if you're in a cold climate, like this shop right here is not climate controlled. If it was 20 degrees in here, that pump wouldn't run right. You'd have to heat this up in order to make it run right. Maybe get a little bit of a heat gun and kind of heat this up on the outside or something like that. I'm not sure what would be the best method to do that. I usually wait till warmer days to run this thing. But bear in mind, or keep that in mind rather, if you do end up with a machine like this and you're in a cold climate, it needs to be warm for it to run properly. I, that happened to me probably three years ago. We just moved here and I was up here, it was like 10 degrees outside and I couldn't get any oil to come through the system. That was because it was too cold. We're almost ready to send this through the process and sharpen this blade. This machine does come with a magnet that will automatically stop the blade once it goes all the way around. I've never used that before. I guess maybe I should, but I really don't mind doing it manually. And here's what I do. 
I got some of this layout fluid, it's red. I think it's for machinist work. And I'll come back here and just put a little mark right there. That's all it takes. So as soon as this goes all the way through, I'll see that red mark come around and that tells me I've went all the way around. And in case I do go a little bit past that, it's not gonna hurt the blade at all. No big deal. But it does have a magnet. And I think the sensor is right there. I just never used it. I don't know why. Maybe one day I'll try that out. I've always just kind of stood by and watched this machine run. Even though it is all hands off. I wanna make sure when I turn on the grinding wheel for the first time, it's not resting on the blade, that's very important. And you also wanna make sure it comes up to speed before you start advancing your blade and doing your grinding. All right, so we got that. Now we're gonna turn on the oil. And it does squirt out a little bit. I'll close this lid once you guys kind of see what's going on. And now I'll go ahead and start advancing the blade and that's pretty much all there is to it. When we go to decent velocity, if you go too slow, it will slow down the wheel. close the lid down and if you can see this mist that comes off it does give off a little bit of an odor so I like to keep the doors open when I run this grinder just for ventilation because it will stink if you don't have some fans going or the main doors open in here so that right there there's two things that cuts down on the dust and the oil splattering out this machine does have three arms that are mounted to it and the blade stays on that arm. It has these little wheels on the inside and that's how the blade stays in position and stays supported as it travels around. All right guys, we're about done. It doesn't take very long. Right there is my mark. And as soon as I see this go inside the grinding machine and start to come out the other side, I'll shut it down. And also, I don't know if you guys could tell the difference in the tone. Once it goes all the way around and it starts hitting the tooth for the second time, I can tell a difference in the noise of the grinder, which tells me it's went through the whole entire blade. Right, guys, some more considerations. This does make a little bit of a mess on the floor, but I have a sawmill and I have plenty of sawdust and that dries it right up, but you will have some oil that drips on the ground as it comes out of this machine. There's a lot of oil that goes on that blade as it does the grinding. Here's another question you may have. What about the burr? A lot of guys take their blade and they'll get like a little dowel and try to get the burr off. I think that's unnecessary. This right here is two pads. They're disposable. You can replace these as you need them. This is the original ones that came on this machine though. They take a lot of the burr off as the blade passes through that and anything that's left on the blade as far as a burr goes will be totally removed the first time this blade goes into a log. It's gone that fast. There's no need, in my opinion, to manually go through here and try to remove it. And once you're done, it's pretty simple to take the blade off. This motor moves up out of the way. This is a clamp right here. You just pull that back and take the blade out and move on to the next one. It's pretty simple. All right, guys, for those of you that run sawmills and you're shipping your blades off to be resharpened, buy yourself a sharpener. Unless you're just using maybe a box of blades every few months. If you're doing any kind of uh, at higher work for your mill, let me see if I can put this a better way. If you've got a nice steady main income or a good side income from your sawmill, make the investment and get a sharpener. And I'm not being told to tell you guys this as far as this is being like a sales pitch. This is just to help you guys out that are out there running sawmills because it will pay for itself so fast, especially in the shipping charge to ship them off to have them sharpen and get them back. Unless you live like down the street from a sharpening center, it's a good idea to get one of these because the shipping prices in this country aren't getting any cheaper. They're going up, it seems like. So here is my sales pitch for you guys, and I'm not being told to say this. 
Joe Main is where I get my silver tip turbo sevens from. Joe Main is now selling that same sharpener made by Woodmiser. You can get it probably cheaper from him than Woodmiser has it. So if you are on the fence and you've been thinking about getting your own sharpening equipment, it's a good time to get it in my opinion. And I won't make nothing off of it. I have no affiliation with Joe as far as like, you know, uh, I don't make any money off anything he sells. I'm just trying to give you guys a good place to go get some equipment that will help you out. So if you do need blades and Joe is where you get your blades at or wherever you get your blades at, I would highly encourage you to have a long look at your finances and look at a sharpener. Now here's something else to think about, a setter. I do have a setter. Ask me how many times I set my blades when I sharpen them. Usually once out of three or four sharpenings and that's just the way I do it. If I hit a nail, I will mark that blade, put it in a different pile. I'll try to set it because it does mess with the set more than regular use does, but I rarely use my setter. Is it good to have a setter? Absolutely. Can you get by with just a sharpener? All day. I didn't have a setter for about two years actually and I ran just fine without one. If I took my setter right now and threw it in the trash can, I'd be just fine running a sharpener. I probably wouldn't get a replacement, put it that way. So having said that, if you can't afford both, go ahead and buy the sharpener and get the setter later on. Or you may find that you don't even need the setter at all. You just need the sharpener. So that's my spiel for you guys out there running sawmills. That will save you a ton of money in shipping and in resharp fees. And it doesn't take no time to run it. It doesn't take a whole lot of area. You can move that thing around on a tool cart. It is pretty heavy. It weighs several hundred pounds. But once you have it set up and you're using it, you're good to go. And you can also make money with it if you want to. There's several wood misers in my area. If I wanted to start sharpening blades for those guys, they would bring them here weekly. I just don't have time to do it. So there's another source of income for your sharpener if you want to go that route. So having said all that, if you're sawmilling and making money or if you're doing a side gig on the weekends, take a good hard look at a sharpener and you will never regret buying the sharpener. I have never regretted buying that tool. Joe Main is now selling them. Give him a phone call. As usual, his cell phone number is down in the video description. All right, I think I got all that out that I was wanting to share with you guys today as far as sharpening equipment goes. So on the sawmill, we're working on some more cedar. I need to saw about 400 more board foot to fill an order I've been working on. And we'll probably get that done today. I'm not sure how much of this I will show because it's the same thing over and over again. Once we get done with the cedar, I got some customer logs in today, some butternut. We'll be moving on to that probably tomorrow or the day after. On the sawmill, you guys know what's on there. If you want them, give Joe a cell phone call. And also, people have been asking me about my hat. Where'd you get this hillbilly hat from? It's actually some kind of Australian hat. It's not a hillbilly hat, even though I'm in Tennessee. I got this on Amazon. It was like $40, and there's a link down below. Go check it out. And if you haven't picked one up yet, my t-shirts are still for sale over on farmfocus.com. The short sleeve ones with the pocket with the beard logo. They still have plenty of them left, so go buy yourself one. It will help keep these cameras rolling because I need a new GoPro because guess what? I drove over it with the tractor yesterday. So there you go. Help me buy a new camera. So let's get going, guys, and see how far we can get done here today. This cedar is sawing up really nice. It's some really good cedar, guys. I'm really happy with it. Good mountain cedar.
did pretty good on that one. Got right at 37 board feet out of that log. Not too bad. Most of them were eight inches wide. So do me a favor while I'm filling up the diesel tank, hit that thumbs up button down below. It won't cost you nothing. Helps these videos out is what YouTube says. I don't know if it does or not, but can't hurt to try. I should have some diesel coming out already. I might be getting kind of low. I should do it. Now, we'll fill up the lubrication tank. It's getting low also. And now for my secret ingredient, not really a secret, I guess. I didn't come up with this. AG Smart Spindle Lubricant and Detergent. I've showed this in previous videos. I put a splash or two in here and it doesn't do as good as diesel on stuff like pine, but it does a good job actually. It's not too bad. And it doesn't get on top of you and on top of you, my goodness. It doesn't get all over you like diesel does. That sounds better. And you could measure it out, but I like to do a scientific approach as far as measuring it out goes. This is how I do it. Yep, that looks like it's pretty good right there. I think it calls for like a teaspoon per 20 gallons or something, so that's more than enough. I get this, uh, let me see, what language am I speaking? I get this. I get this at a farm store online. I'll try to find the link to it. It's cheap stuff. The most expensive part is shipping like anything else. Good stuff though.
Thank you.